So, hello. Um, let's start. Uh, we have, I think, uh, 50 minutes in all, so I will hurry up uh, here. In the previous slides and presentations, we saw the overall picture somehow, the, the grid thing. And in the last slide, we dig into one system somehow. And in this slide, we also want to dig a little bit more in the details how to analyze the power consumption. What we saw also in the previous uh, presentation, there was a Sure, sure, sorry. Uh, what we saw in the last uh, presentation was that we saw the power consumption of one system. A little bit similar to what PowerTop uh, provides, that we saw this task uh, consumes um, n watts, whatever. And, uh, but the question what you often have is after this, yeah, this, this data, how you can optimize uh, your load for your server, for your embedded product somehow. What are um, the causes why the application runs too often, the system runs too often, cannot go in the deep uh, C st uh, states, um, P states and such things, right? At the end, it's the hardware that consumes the power and you can save power uh, if you put um, things to, into the deep sleep states or consumes the frequency somehow. And this is um, really important to, yeah, saves energy. And uh, what we did, um, in the past was you're writing scripts to optimize your workload and get things, what are the causes that an application runs too often, right? So runs often, cannot go in a deep sleep steps. This is important to do the power optimization. And what I provide in the next couple of um, slides here is an application that helps you to optimize your workload uh, and makes this um, visible somehow. So what we are talking about is a perf, um, a perf script, an extension to perf. So it's, um, if it is mainline, it's not yet mainlined. Uh, I will send this script to Analdo in the mailing list and uh, hopefully it gets merged quickly somehow. But when it's uh, merged then, uh, it's, it's really usable, easy usable. It's just an uh, apt get install and everything works out. And also for Yocto and Buildroot, it's really easy to use these things after. It's also important that it can be used in um, embedded systems and everywhere. Uh, how does it work? It's just a um, record call where you record your workload. So it's the workload separator, it's like a uh, every time. And here I record for 60 for one minute workload on all CPUs. And then you uh, record everything minute fine and then you start uh, with the report the power analyzer and it has different modes because I have just 10 minutes I uh, show one uh, mode here but there are different modes for different uh, optimization analysis and things so uh, what are the modes there are several modes that can be activated and used and you just activate or use the mode you want to focus and dig into the details, right? This is what how things works. And um, what's also important, every mode have different trace points in the kernel. So re you no usually record only the trace points you uh, require for the particular analysis. Because if you uh, record everything, every trace point, you get a lot of uh, huge data and things. So uh, normally you limit the data. Uh, how does it work? So there's the perf script. As always, you can uh, write uh, record the data, as we saw for one minute here. And um, it just records all the trace points that are required. But um, on the other hand, you can also record the data that are required for your analysis. This is documented what uh, trace points are uh, required. Then you have the data. And then you start the script, the report step, and here uh, outputs all the analysis for this we started here with a timer, so what are the timer events somehow? And then, because there's a lot of data uh, coming out of this, you usually can use this data already and see, ah, uh, here something is not working well, too much timer interaction, for example. But what you also can do is some post-processing and um, create to create data graphs somehow or filter things afterwards because it's a lot of data. And uh, here, just a showcase, this is for, uh, one image what's created. Um, you see the time and you see a, a workload. It's a logarithmic scale here, how much time timers are working. Timers are uh, one cause 
that, uh, that triggers uh, from a deep C state to an active state to C, uh, zero state somehow. Timers are not that good. Often you see, if you f um, begin analyzing things on your desktop CC, you see here, I think this is the, the kitty, my terminal I use here. It has just um, wake-ups all the time. Why are there wake-ups here? And then you see often some buggy applications, clipboard uh, things there, constantly triggering your system. And this prevents to going into a deep sea state, right? This is, the, this is the causes that prevents this. So it's really important. And here is a workload I started. And you see all the timers th that are uh, correlate with starting a workload here. You see a lot of uh, kernel timers. And then you can start optimizing things. This is just a focus for the timer events, and there, but there are a lot of other events as well. Um, this is other subsequent analysis also just for the timer events. You see here uh, for a tickless system, so uh, normally um, if there is no load, uh, a kernel can really go in a deep uh, sl uh, sl um, sorry, uh, sleep state. Um, and then it uh, shuts down the timer tick uh, altogether. But does it really uh, stop the timer tick? You will see it here in these images, and you can uh, analyze things and optimize things. What are the kernel timers that trigger your systems? If you look at the graphs a little bit, uh, yeah, the resolution is not that good, but you see it, it's, um, there are uh, timer ticks all the time. Uh, NAPI, so network interrupts, timers are working here, and you can optimize this if you see this and uh, you know what's happened. What we see here in this graph is the timers that are for uh, each particular task. So you can optimize for your task as well. How many timers are there? It's I often see in the, in the production environment that there are timers done all the time somehow and not correlated. What you can also do, there are system calls um, for the granularity that the timer can optimize things. For example, the kernel with the introduction of the HR timers, the high resolution timers, you can align timers so that timers are not really spaced there and they're exactly triggered at a particular moment in time with the uh, with the simple system knobs, you can also say, oh no, it's not so important that the timer is triggered at this time, so that the kernel aligns timers at a particular time and allows a deeper sleep state again, something. And this is then, uh, can be, um, this, com this knowledge can be combined with the knowledge of this, what you see here, for example. Or what, where are the timers, right? Uh, CPU zero is somehow uh, special. There are the timers. Can you move? for example, task to CPU 1, so that this other um, CPU calls can go in a deeper C state, for example, right? All this is uh, important to do the uh, optimization there. There are some general options. Um, some analysts are not um, always required. This can be turned on with this particular flag. The CPU, often you want uh, analysis on a particular CPU, so you can limit the data. And there's a file out option, so if you want to do uh, post-processing, as we saw in the images, somehow that the data is not uh, put it on the standard out, so it's put it in the file, and you can use this there. And the, the data is uh, also written in a day and, and sanitized that you can just use um, pandas here to read the CVS data, and for the post-processing is really easy. But there are multiple modules there provided. This is just a sneak peek on the timer uh, module, but a lot of other modules as well you can use then later on. Um, but uh, due to the time limit, uh, I just uh, uh, highlighted this uh, timer module. But uh, one just last sneak peek here, for example, is the, the governor. The governor um, is the, the component in within the kernel to uh, do the processing and commanding of disease deep steps. This is the governor. You can select a different governors. It's normally it's the menu governor. There are other governors as well. And here what you see, what is the, how often is which C state is commanded here. And what is also analyzed is, was this good or not? Because uh, the kernel do a, ga a guess working, right? So he uh, thinks, ah, the next time in 10 milliseconds it must there's a workload because a timer will trigger, so it puts um, a processor in a particular C state. But was this the right decision or sleeps too narrow, too shallow? And so this is also important somehow. And here you can debug the, the governor. Uh, you 
a student of mine also discovered a bug uh, for the AMD stuff. It's for one particular Z1 state. It's uh, switched all the time to the, the wrong state, so, but he, I think this will be uh, released in the next couple of uh, weeks somehow. So it's really uh, also important for you if you see, is this, does the, the, the governor does the right job here? This is visible with uh, another analysis, but there are multiple other post-processing steps, and yeah, that's all. Um, I hope this will be integrated in the mainline in the next couple of weeks, um, but uh, if you want, you can use the, this kernel tree and this particular branch to use this, it's just a perf script, um, really easy also to use out of the tree. And this post-processing script cannot be shipped uh, with the kernel, that's not how the kernel somehow works, this Python script, and there are, uh, will be always available here based on this, and uh, at the end, good documented, hopefully, somehow. Um, so, yeah, that's all. Yeah. Questions, yeah, perfect. Questions? I'm always getting a question. Um, pro processor coverage, just x86, um, what sort of coverage have you got? I mean, now, look, I've got a, an M1 Apple thing. Would I be able to run it off of there if I run Linux on that hardware? Yeah, this, um, the script will work uh, on ARM x86 for Intel and AMD. There are differences in the p-state uh, um, tracking because p-state tracking is the introduction of Skylake and HWP, HWP with the hardware tracing, so it will be not visible, but it will be visible on ARM CPUs, for example. Some, also, some will work, some will not work, but it's just uh, yeah, Linux and uh, all the major. And some uh, are more software, the, the analysis of uh, scheduling events somehow it will always run, but the more hardware-like uh, analysis will not work somehow, but yeah. Uh, just a follow-up for previous question. Will it work for, like, Graviton, all this kind of cloud proprietary processors? Yeah, it would generally uh, run there. Uh, if it at least Linux, ARM, um, and the processor, and it will just uh, be the same. So no difference there. Another question? If not, uh, later on we can install the script at your PC and test it. <laughs> Hi, Aaron. Yeah. That's just a follow-up on the previous question. There's actually an extra library, libopencsd, which gives you a whole load of extra stuff on most ARM cores, but not necessarily Apple's and Amazon's ARM cores, but any that actually come from standard designs. So a Turing design here, um, one goal was that it runs everywhere somehow, right? It must be general, so, and I don't, um, we don't um, skip going into the EPPF world, so there are advantages to do things in the kernel, to aggregation in the kernel, so, but this has sometimes uh, problems with, uh, on a specific uh, ARM MP socks and embedded products, so, so the design was really that it runs everywhere and it's easy to use and generally available somehow. Somehow EPPF working with EPPF things do in the kernel and process unwanted data there out has some advantages, right? But you need a, a tool chain then on an embedded product so it's not that uh, great somehow. And this everything I told you was somehow the idea on the design somehow. No extra library, uh, keep it a bit of minimal stuff which works everywhere somehow. If you want to do more, and often you want to do more, if you analyze your particular task, how is the scheduling behavior, you need more, and you need more custom scripting as well somehow, but this is not here. I think it's a lot of data already there, easily available somehow, but if you want to do more, you need more scripting and things like that, and libraries you want to use. Sure. It's a compromise. Maybe a question for me. Uh, can you give us a few insights uh, about the community? Um, how many developers, how many people contribute? Uh, currently, I'm the main uh, developer. <laughs> so, uh, 
But, but, but at the end, it's just a, a Python script, so it's not really a, the rocket science. And, and there are um, um, students also working on this, uh, help things and looking at the details. But yeah, it's, it's, it's not that uh, magic somehow. It's, uh, it's just keeping things, putting together and make them easy usable. That's, that's, yeah. The trace points and, and Stephen Rosset and all the things that the infrastructure that the kernel provides are the main drivers that this thing that this is possible, right? So this trust in script. Yeah.